Hey everybody. Hello. Can you hear me now? Is that better? All right, thank you everybody for coming. We're gonna get this officially kicked off. Uh, my name is Chris Henry. I am the general manager for Stony Point Design Build and we're the, the builder and developer out here on site. Um, I'm gonna say a few words and we've got a couple other uh, stakeholders that were instrumental in getting this project done that will speak and then we're gonna turn it over to Supervisor Norman Dill here from County Board of Supervisors and we will get the ribbon cut and we will start doing tours of the building. Um, so, it's an honor to be joined by so many friendly faces as we celebrate the ribbon cutting of this innovative, environmentally friendly, beautiful new addition to Charlottesville's River Corridor. The River House is the product of a true collaboration of the project team, including Jimmy Gregg Architects, Shimp Engineering, Earthcraft Virginia, Goodman Excavating, Shrek Eyes Shrubbery, Sun Tribe Solar, Martin Horn, and last but not least, the County of Albemarle. We couldn't have done it without you all. The team at Stony Point Design Build is delighted to unveil the River House condos. This building marks many firsts. It is the first Earthcraft certified condominium building in Charlottesville and includes the first parking lot solar canopy in Central Virginia. It is the first condominium built in the county's neighborhood model zoning overlay district in which 15% of the units meet the county's definition of affordable housing. And it is the first building in Charlottesville to embrace the Rivanna River as an asset just a few steps past the kayak rack and down the trail behind the building. We at Stony Point Design Build believe that the River House and Riverside Village provide an example of the development that, of the type of development that benefits the community and demonstrates re responsible stewardship of the environment. At full build out, this community will feature 17 attached villas, 16 detached single family homes, six townhomes, 24 condominiums, 34 apartment units, 12,000 square feet of retail space uh, and restaurant space, which everyone experienced on their way in as what's currently our parking area, and 18 affordable dwelling units sprinkled throughout the community. This diverse mix of housing types and sizes coupled with commercial space creates a truly sustainable mixed-use community from a social, environmental, and economic perspective. At Stony Point Design Build, we believe that our brand of community-based development delivers on our vision of creating great places and enhancing lives through the built environment and we believe that as a community, we should celebrate the next great places to live, work, and play. The River House Condominiums at Riverside Village is exactly this type of place. Thank you for joining us as we continue the evolution of this special community. We look forward to seeing you again as a buyer, seller, resident, or customer in the shops at Riverside Village coming spring 2018. <laughs> Now I'd like to turn it over to Robert Manasco, the project manager for Martin Horn. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Um, I just wanted to uh, say a quick few words. Chris had asked me to talk a little bit about the building um, and some of the features that it has and some of the qualities that it has. Um, First of all, I would like to give a shout out to two people. Calvin Wilkerson, who's over there. Raise your hand, Calvin. He was the superintendent on the project, uh, managed it day to day. And then next to him is uh, Grant Wilson. He helped me out in the office on the project as well. Um, so a couple of things that Chris wanted me to talk about, uh, just a little bit about the building. Um, so we started July 13th. We broke ground last year, so about 11 months um, in the process. But during that, we started probably February or December, January, somewhere in that nature, uh, working with Chris, working with the design team, um, making sure that the building meets the Earthcraft specifications and all of the cost implications that they needed to meet. Um, as you look on the outside of the building, uh, you'll notice all the materials are built with quality. Um, and this was a design intention to ease maintenance and keep a low maintenance building. Um, from the stone to the stucco, all of the hardy is all pre-finished, which has a 25 year warranty, I think, on it. So, I mean, all of the exterior of the building is built to last, which should give the condo association a low uh, cost of ownership. Um, 
some of the features that Chris wanted me to talk about on the inside are some of the STC ratings. So we used some new materials um, both in the floors and in the walls uh, to keep a high sound uh, transfer between units so people don't hear other people talking or people don't hear other people's music or noise. Um, some of the other features, you know, granite countertops, uh, wood floors in most of the units, um, energy efficiency appliances, uh, those things help keep the owner's cost low. Um, some of the other things, uh, so as Chris mentioned, this is an Earthcraft certified building. Uh, it is the first in Charlottesville, but it's also the first market rate um, Earthcraft certified building in the state itself. So, I mean, that's a round of applause right there. Uh, something you didn't know about. Uh, so, with Earthcraft, um, John from Think Little right here in the center, uh, he was with us the whole time from basically the, the beginning. Um, he inspected the project from framing all the way to completion to make sure we met the Earthcraft certification. Um, he was a very big help in making sure that we met that Earthcraft certification. Um, and with Earthcraft, the three main things that they focus on are the energy, um, so making sure that the owner's cost for energy is low. Um, so using, you know, LED light bulbs and uh, high sear HVAC equipment, um, that's the first thing. The second thing is um, the water to make sure everything's energy efficient and water, low use uh, water. Um, and then the third thing is the air quality. So making sure that people have, you know, good breathing air. Um, there's recirculation units. There's fresh air that takes, you know, the air from the outside in to make sure that everybody has fresh air inside of all their units. Um, that's really all I had to say about the building. I'm going to turn it over to Rich, right? And he's going to talk a little bit about the solar features of the building. Um, so Rich will leave you. All right. Um, so my name is Richard Levy. I am a co-founder and director of operations at SunTribe Solar. Um, and I wanted to start off just by thanking Stony Point for the opportunity to partner um, on the development and construction of this solar array. Um, it's it's pretty amazing. Um, and I also I wanted to thank um, especially Martin Horn and personally Calvin Wilkerson for making this job site uh, a great job site to come work at. Um, Calvin and his dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so thank you, Calvin. Some other thank yous, um, Safeway Electric, Blair Construction, and Bear Creek Enterprises for their work on the construction portion of, of this array. And then also um, uh, Engineering Solutions, Shimp Engineering, and Trevor Francis, our VP of Engineering, because um, for all the time that uh, Josh Batman and I spent trying to draw this on a whiteboard and in Google SketchUp, and it was really awesome. Um, those guys are the ones that actually took that design and put the engineering behind it to make it a reality. So thank you guys for that. Um, also, um, I just wanted to, to give a shout out to uh, Jody, Hannah, and Angie for putting this event together. So thank you guys for, for um, making this happen. And then finally, um, I left this until last uh, because I wanted to kind of take a minute to um, maybe just brag a little bit about how awesome our crew at SunTribe Solar is. And these guys, some of them are here today. Um, who do we have? We have um, Jake Murray, we have Zach Davis, we have Luke Heinrich, and we have Sean Farber, um, and Kelly Faust, who is our VP of Field Operations and Oversees All Construction. Anybody else back there? Yeah, we got Taylor, he's my business partner too. Um, so thank you guys. I mean, you know, I, I I always end up up here, the one who's talking about this, but it's, it's really not, you know, it's not me who deserves the thanks, it's those guys who actually built this. Um, so just a round of applause for them, please. So uh, SunTribe's proud to be part of something that's kind of a first in this area, or not kind of a first, an, an actual first in this area. And um, as you can tell, this is probably a, this is a quite innovative approach to solar. And um, I think it, you know, it goes out to other businesses and stakeholders to recognize that you know, slapping solar panels on a roof, which you know, is also a great option, um, is not the only way to, to bring renewables into your, into your portfolio. Um, and I think and, you know, this is kind of, um, kind of representative of, of the creative ways that we can approach um, uh, you know, sustainability. And just to give a couple of facts about this, so this, um, this array has 100 solar panels. 
um, is a 27 kilowatt array and it's estimated to produce 35 megawatt hours of electricity on an annual basis. Um, and so if that, for, for most, if that's not uh, necessarily a palpable number, it's, it's, always kind of, it's always fun to kind of throw these other numbers out there. Um, the amount of carbon that that will offset um, is equivalent to 27 tons per year, which in turn is equivalent to the amount of carbon sequestered by 23 acres of U.S. forests in a year. Um, so the construction of this array will, um, will act as the equivalent of you know, 23, 23 acres of forest, which is amazing. Um, and so this is also estimated to produce 100% of the electricity required for the common areas in this building. Um, so that's, that's the way that it was designed. So um, while many unique features have gone into making this entire community um, a sustainable community, um, the residents here can kind of look to this solar canopy as a beacon um, and a representation of Stony Point's commitment to uh, making this a superior neighborhood, which it obviously is. Uh, just by looking around. Um, more and more businesses in our area are realizing that incorporating renewable energy into their uh, new designs or existing structures is not only a smart financial decision, but one that benefits the community at large and the environment as well. So um, just uh, in conclusion, I just want to you know, recognize Stony Point. Um, firms like them are leading the way, and uh, we're proud to have helped you guys uh, moving, uh, in moving solar forward in the county in Charlottesville and, and, and our community. So. Yeah. And last but not least, Norman Dill. Hi. I live on the hill above here, and some of you might not realize where the name Pantops comes from. I'm looking at the Pantops community here. Thomas Jefferson named it that pan being for view, as in the root word of panorama, and tops being like topical. Uh, I don't know which was Greek and which was Latin, but uh, they come from those two languages that Thomas Jefferson spoke fluently, I guess, or read fluently anyway. So my interest in this is not only the great residences and everything that people have talked about, but the sense of community that this is adding. Pentops is a brand new community. A lot of the housing here has been built in the last 10 years, 20 years, and now we're trying to make it more comfortable and neighborly. Uh, we have a Dardentau Park over here, which is a combination owned by the city and the county <clears throat> and has thousands and thousands of people visiting every year. We're going to be adding pickleball courts even soon. We have, believe it or not, three Montessori schools just in Pantops. We have the uh, Clifton Inn a little further out, Martha Jefferson Hospital, of course, and Peter Jefferson Place. Thomas Jefferson walked this area. He didn't uh, own it. It wasn't part of Monticello, but it was part of his father's estate. So Peter Jefferson plays back there with the UVA Museum, ponds, trails, and more, all the way down to Freebridge down here, which we're going to link with the city. The Ravana River Renaissance Commission is a joint city, county, Thomas Jefferson Planning District project to develop, and it's great to hear you say that this is the first building facing the river. For some reason, every business, everything along the river is facing inwards towards the city or towards the county instead of towards the river. So we're going to be trying to change that over the next few years. So this is a great start on, or a great addition to the community we're trying to build here in Pantops. So let's get the ribbon. All right, thank you. So that concludes the ceremony. We're going to um, cut the ribbon, take a few pictures, of course, and then people can are, feel free to wander through the building. And we have four or five open units, uh, including a staged model unit, um, unit number 403 on the top floor. Um, so that should be exciting, and hope everybody has a great night.